Thanks for watching Numbskull News. And today, I'm going to talk about more evidence that the University of North Carolina will not be going to the Big Ten and the SEC. I know it sounds like I keep harping on this, okay? But the media persists. They persist on, they keep talking about this huge value of that property, of that school, of that brand to the SEC and the Big Ten. I'm not saying they don't have value. I'm saying they don't have that value. And I understand I'm going against the grain here big time. I'm going way against the chalk. I get that. But <laughs> let me explain a few things. Let me go down this rabbit hole and unpack a few things for you, especially in light of this new evidence that I'm going to present today. Now, as probably some of you have heard, Amazon has come in. Now, people think that Amazon came in and just bought Bally's. That's, that's not the case. They've come in and spent $100 million just to get the right to broadcast some of Bally's content uh, it was like Bally's Plus. They had like a uh, internet option. That's what they're purchasing. That's what Well, that's what Amazon Prime Video is purchasing. So right now, the deal still needs to be uh, approved by U.S. Bankruptcy Court in the Southern District of Texas. That's what it says down here. However, there's been a long road. Let's put it that way. And through this deal, you're kind of finding what the true nature is of streaming services and how they're getting into the sports game. There is an insightful Forbes article about all this, and you can read that on Forbes if you wish. Through all the news that I've read about Bally's and what they've been through the last couple of years is essentially it used to be uh, Fox Sports Southwest or whatever, FSN. And then the... Uh, then the Justice Department said, no, no, Fox, since Fox Studios was selling out and being acquired by Disney, they made Fox sell off those uh, broadcasting rights, FSN, essentially. And those were bought by Sin a Sinclair Group, which is a, a cable TV provider. And then they formed Diamond Sports to manage that stuff. And then diamond sports brought in bally's let them buy in which was like you know a huge uh casino conglomerate you know to help fund everything unfortunately the uh the ratings keep dropping like hell now i've talked about the whole bally's bankruptcy um before and i'll get i'll get to how all this ties in to unc in just a minute but I just want to kind of lay the groundwork and unpack a few things before I connect the dots. You know, I'm trying to do this in a smart, intelligent, almost intelligent. I don't want to go too far. Almost intelligent type of way. Okay. Bally's has been trying like hell to sell whatever they can to streamers. Uh, they successfully did something with FUBU. That fell apart. I'm not exactly sure why that fell apart. But they also tried uh, YouTube TV and YouTube TV low-balled the living crap out of them. They couldn't afford to do that. Uh, went, into chap went into Chapter 11 bankruptcy. And now Amazon has come in. Now that it's a, a really distressed property. And 100 million bucks ain't much. And I think what we're seeing, we're seeing streamers come in when things get distressed. When the traditional platforms are having trouble. I think this is how they're going to get further into into the sports space is you know look you look at how apple tv handled the pac-12 you know they they refused to get into a bid and more with espn or anybody else over that property they essentially they put a deal out there you know from what i understand they put a deal out there really they were talking for a while but they really didn't put a deal out there to the very end all right, because these talks with Apple were going on forever. And once everybody was out, then they dropped their deal. And, you know, it was kind of like a last-ditch effort deal. 
pennies on the dollar, if you will. They weren't trying to over outspend everybody. Like, and that was reported by big, the big sports media conglomerates all over the freaking place. That was reported by all the all the big dogs. But that's not what happened. They waited till everybody else bowed out, and the pack had no other choice. Then they came in with an offer. But I think that's how they're going to acquire content in the future. The linear TV mo model, right? Your cable and your satellite providers. That shit is getting worse and worse. It, the bundle, the linear bundle. It's barely hanging on by a thread. I mean, just this year, just this year, people are speculating uh, about several networks that are probably going to go away or be permanently put onto streamers like Peacock. Uh, you got like a cable channel called Universal Kids. That thing was down 90%. They lost 90% of their viewership last year. This is a kids channel. Or how about Boomerang? We've all heard of Boomerang. Guess what? They're going down big time. This is kids, children's programming. But what's going on? Kids are getting smartphones. Now, I don't agree with getting an elementary school kid a smartphone. Get them a damn flip phone. All right, let them get a job and buy their own. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. But that stuff is going down. All right, MTV's barely hanging on, but people are speculating that, you know, because there's several different uh, uh, minor MTV channels, MTV2 and other MTV properties. People are thinking those are either going to be outright canceled or they're going to be re relegated to some kind of streamer. Uh, FXS which is, uh, you know, you've, everyone's heard of the FX channel, right? Well, they also have FXS. They have several different FX channels. That one is down 70% last year. Uh, BET, they have some sub channels. Uh, there's BET Her, BET Hip Hop. Uh, those are also speculated to either be outright canceled or put on streamers because they are down significantly in viewership. This is happening happening all over the cable bundle. Those are just a few examples of whole freaking channels, cable channels, satellite channels that are going away or going down. Now, the bundle itself is being propped up. It's being propped up essentially by a live sports bubble. All right like the tech bubble years before the housing bubble. This is a live sports bundle. I, y'all have heard me in other videos talk about it. And I think that's what's happening. But what we're seeing is the diminishing of that bubble. In other words, uh, that bubble is starting to contract. So as that contracts, the, the entire, uh, linear bundle starts to fail and starts to crumble. And as that starts to crumble, then you see, the streamers come in and get content pennies on the dollar. That's great business, and that's what they're looking to do. They're looking to liquidate. They're looking for a deal. They're looking for the steal, baby. And we're starting to see it happen. Bally's and the Amazon deal is proof of some of that. But it goes, for, we got more proof of that. More proof of it is Mark Cuban selling the Dallas Mavericks. Holy shit. Holy shit. And I might read a little bit of this here. Uh, it says, now the future of media rights deals is in question. Diamond Sports, as we just talked about, the company owns regional sports network that carries the Mavericks, is in bankruptcy proceedings. Mark Cuban said the sale revenue from media rights deals Cuban said that the sale, basically the sale of the Dallas Mavericks, makes revenue from media rights deals much less of a concern for the Mavericks. Financially, we're in a far better position this afternoon than we were yesterday afternoon to be able to compete like that, Cuban said. What does that mean? The local media rights, bally's and things of that nature. This is something that's been bothering him for the last five years. At least that's what he said. And he's been really pushing along, you know, and him, people he sold the Mavericks to, they are a, hu a huge conglomerate in the betting world based in Las Vegas. They've been trying and they've been lobbying the living crap out of the state legislature, including the governor, trying to get live sports, casino gambling legalized in Texas. 
what Mark Cuban was saying, hey, if we could combine the Mavericks with a casino hotel in Dallas to get a new stadium, new casino, new hotel, that would be huge and we would make a shit ton of money and we really wouldn't have to worry about the, the media rights, the local media rights, stuff like the money they make off of Bally's. You follow me here? Now, he also has a concern, and there's also a concern in the marketplace about the NBA and their next rights deal that's up right now. Now, most people feel that that deal will be fine, that they may even double what they get. I have some questions about that. Because it's really strange to me that Mark Cuban would sell the Mavericks that he loves. And a lot of people have asked questions like, why would Mark Cuban sell right now? It's kind of a mystery. He, he's given some types of answers. Some people speculate, well, maybe he's running for office. Well, you don't have to sell the Mavericks to run for office. You, you just don't. Ask Donald Trump. You put everything you have into a trust and you walk away from it, but you still own it. He could, he could have easily have done that if he wanted to run for office. But he, as he has said time and time again, he does not. And I believe him. But guys like John Skipper, the former head of ESPN, I saw him on a podcast, and he was just flabbergasted. I can't believe he sold. It came out of nowhere. I didn't. I don't understand this. You know, he had a good working relationship, he, despite all the fines <laughs> from that Mark Cuban had acquired over the years. He had a very good working relationship with Mark Cuban, done business with the man, Knew he was a passionate owner, and that's why Dallas Mavericks fans love Mark Cuban, because he is passionate, and he's helped put the Mavericks on the map, and then just sell like that. It's insane. Here's the thing. I think he's worried about the overall media rights, and he and the reason he is so on this gambling thing, because he knows... Media rights isn't going to be what it is right now. Right now for their media rights, the NBA gets about $1.5, $1.4 billion all right, a year on their media rights. A lot of people like John Skipper think it's going to go up to $2.5 to $3 billion, all right, double or more than double. I don't know. Why would Mark Cuban sell when the media rights are about to bump way up and his team's about to get... And his franchise is about to get more money from the media rights. A lot of people are speculating. It's not really the media rights that's up right now that people in the NBA are worried about. It's the rights, the next media rights deal. That that deal might be significantly less than what they're getting right now. Because that bundle is going down. The interest in live sports, folks, believe it or not. It's going down. The NBA has lost 70% of its viewership since 1998. What in this shit? You ain't hearing that from the big media types out there, the big journalists out there. They're telling you the NBA is killing it. The NBA, no, it's not. It is not. Since Jordan has left the Bulls, people, this son of a bitch is dying. The NBA, not the WNBA, the NBA. NBA is screwed. They've lost 70% of their viewership. And right their next media deal, I don't know if they're going to get that significant of a pay bump right now. I really don't. A lot of people think it, it they will. A lot of people thought Fox had this huge war chest to go and purchase the rights of the CFP Turns out, no, they didn't. I'm just saying, on the on the on the big scale of things, you know, on the macro scale of all of this crazy business that's going on in the sports media landscape, the sports business part of it. And I'm not an expert at all. I just see when I look things up, I see a lot of down arrows, a lot of down arrows, and a lot of down arrows. And people that you never thought you would lose money on live sports or go bankrupt on live sports. Something is making Mark Cuban sell the Mavericks, y'all. If this, I mean, could you imagine Jerry Jones selling the Cowboys? This dude prints money off that franchise. It makes a shit ton of money, regardless of how much it disappoints us fans every year. The jersey sells. 
you know, the memorabilia, the revenue streams out the ass for the Dallas Cowboys. That's why it's such a rich franchise. That's why Jerry Jones ain't trying to sell because he makes an ass ton of money on it. Mark Cuban could not make that off the Mavericks. Now, it's not, it's not the brand. It's not the same IP. I get it. But if the media rights are just going up and up and up, why sell? Why sell for 3.5 when the Suns sold not too long ago for $4 billion? And that was a distressed sale. The NBA was kicking an owner out. They wanted him the hell out of town. And it sold for $500 million more. Now, Mark Cuban is keeping a 27% stake of the Dallas Mavericks. And hopes, I'm sure he's hoping that the whole gambling thing comes into play and then he can really clean up even on that 27% and without taking a lot of risk and cashing a lot of his shit out. I get that. But why is he cashing out? Because he wants to be in a safe place. He's not like those that gambling people that he just sold the Mavericks to. They're worth a hell of a lot more money than he is. And Mark Cuban's a billionaire, but they're worth a hell of a lot more. They can afford to take this shot with the Mavericks. It's no three billion, three point five billion. All right, they they have that in their sock drawer. They don't care. They're just using every kind of outlet to try to get casino gambling legalized in Texas, and they're going to keep pushing for it until they do, because they're going to make a killing when it when it happens. And owning an NBA franchise and putting that together with a casino hotel is going to be massive and they want to be there. And they're huge in the real estate game as well. All of this makes nothing but sense for them. But Mark Cuban getting out is Mark Cuban getting out of that, getting out of his beloved Mavericks like that, not being the big dog anymore. That should be a shot across everybody's bow on what's going on with live sports. Why this connects to UNC going to the SEC or the Big Ten is because the biggest value of UNC, what everyone tells me, why the Big Ten and the SEC lust after UNC is because they're in a new territory, right? They're in North Carolina. That's the ninth most populated state in the union. The demographics are great. They want to get in there and get those carriage fees and make that money with the Big Ten Network and the SEC Network. The problem is that bundle, that linear bundle is going down, people, because the live sports part is going down. And I'm willing to bet that ESPN and Fox are well aware of this thing. This is why ESPN is looking to go direct to consumer. They're looking to get out while the getting is good. They're making moves right now to do that. Why are they going to want to spend money on UNC? Oh, because of the carriage fees. But when that linear model, that, that, that linear bundle, when that thing collapses... What is a network going to be worth? How about jack and shit? That includes the SEC network. That includes the Big Ten network. What's going to happen to them? It's the same thing that's going to happen to Boomerang. That's going to happen to MTV and a lot of these. They're going to go to a streamer full time. That's what's going to happen. They're going to go direct to consumer. And you're not going to make the same money that you do now with cable and satellite. It's, 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 you're not going to make that money. That's what's going to happen. And everything I just talked about with Amazon and Bally's, Mark Cuban selling the Mavericks, this is all further proof of what I've been talking about. The downfall of the linear model, the downfall and the contraction of the live sports, bu- uh, live sports bubble and ultimately... This devalues the biggest reason why UNC would go to the SEC or the Big Ten. Because what makes them the most valuable to them is going away. It's collapsing. 
and they don't have the type of ratings to be extraordinarily valuable to the Big Ten or the SEC. That football brand, the UNC football brand, is not big enough. They don't make the kind of money. They don't provide the premium matchups for those two conferences. The only real value UNC has is where they're at. Geography, the location. But the value of of that is in the linear bundle. It's in satellite and cable subscriptions. People signing up to that traditional bundle. But the bundle is dying. Therefore, the value to those two conferences, the value for ESPN and Fox to pay them premium dollars is going down. That's why they're not going. Anyway, that's all I had to cover in this BS. And I'll be back with some more crap later. Bye.